So, this might take a minute, but uh, I think what we should be able to see, though, once this is this is complete, is that we can go into the UI. We can. Um, yeah, let me just switch over to the UI right now. How about that? Oh, I see. Let me, uh... Wow, the stream manager <laughs> is really like that, but hopefully we're okay. Um, so, I don't need to see this right now. Let's refresh. How this goes. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> refreshed, and then we'd at least be able to see the existing UI. Yeah, will it load? And what version will it load? Um, anyway, so the, the goal here is that we're going to have a new tab on the stream edit view, so we don't have that yet. But we'll, we'll have a new tab here that'll be like uh, audio or something like that. We'll be able to click into that. And just like with the transcript, we'll, we'll have a button. Uh, speaking of which, I think I didn't update the text of the button. Or maybe I did. Stream, silence, detection, input. Let's see. How does that work? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the button should be detect silences. So we'll have a button in the UI to detect silences in the stream recording or recordings. And so we'll be able to click that and then we'll be able to click a button to check the status of that, see how it's going. Um, so if we click this, okay, we get a, we get a little thing here showing the, the status of the task, which in the case of the transcript, that task completed, so it's done. Let's see, I'm not dropping frames. I am getting a warning that the encoding overloaded. Yeah, okay. 10% CPU. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, computer. All right, last started. So like all of these should update because we'll have new builds. But that is what is lagging my computer right now is just all the CPU to do all the work. Yeah. So anyway, so then we'll be able to get kind of a, um, a list of segments of detected silences. I think that's how that works, right? So it'll be like uh, from zero, you know, basically from the beginning of the recording to five minutes in, silence. And then there are probably some silences detected throughout the stream to like the one hour mark. And there'll be like a chunk of like three minutes of silence. So that's what I'm expecting to see. I think what will be interesting is instead of using, like we could probably show like the textual information, but it might be good to have like a, uh, a bar, like a timeline showing that information. And then I think what we'll wanna do from that is to have some UI elements that we can click to set where we want to, um, like what, where the episode starts and stops, maybe, or maybe, maybe you just edit the, 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 ooh, maybe you just edit the, those silence periods directly, and then you can convert that to episodes. Well, does that really work? Because it'll be the opposite, right? So the episodes will be the periods. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll have like little markers that we can put on or something. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, right now we're still waiting for the build to happen. <laughs> Might be a few more minutes. Uh, I don't, I don't say it enough. I say it some, but it's worth saying. Thank you all for being here and hanging out. Even if this is, um, uh, I know, I know a couple people here are 
coding is not really their thing, but they're here just to, to support me and the channel. <laughs> and that's real cool. So thanks to all the lurkers. What is coding? I don't know. Really, I don't know. <laughs> it's what Copilot does, right? <laughs> All right, I think the build finished. Uh, of course, the... Good, good, that's all good. Let's refresh. Ah. <laughs> Uh, well that, oh, right, right, right. So we need to restart the front end. Of course. I, I looked at this and I was like, oh, well, it last started two hours ago. Great. Well, it wasn't part of the, the build process, right? But, of course, we want to restart this anyway to, um, to actually see the front end updates. Twitch favorites. What are you? Is this... It is a public repo, so I'm assuming it's okay if I show this on stream. It is... It is it. Well, not an empty repository, but it looks like it's a, a freshly initialized one. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna star it. Sure. Okay, good. Because I did. <laughs> Oh sure, sure. But you got you got an initial thing here. You got an MIT license and code of contact. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, I'll watch it too. All activity. <laughs> I'll fork it too while I'm at it. Yoink. Alright. Hopefully I won't. Oh, I should just actually keep that tab to one. Yeah, four years old. That's forever. <laughs> In code years. Uh, Alright, so we should have another tab now, hopefully. Audio. What's in this tab? Not audio. <laughs> Start detect silences. I feel like there should be more here. What happened? Oh yeah, so we've not implemented. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Q silent, uh, Q stream silent uh, detection on right. So that was that. That's the bit that we missed. That actually wires up the front end to the back end. So we should probably get on that. Also figure out where that non word is. Copy. Message. There it is. Okay, Q stream silence detection. We'll call it that. Um, also, we don't need this stuff. There we go. Save. Now let's go to the data provider. And we'll create a custom method. Yep. Copilot, write this for me. Hey, Mushroom Goblin. Blessings for your stream. Not sticking around as I'm setting up too. Big hugs. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. Hope your stream goes well. Are you doing more uh, Baldur's Gate or Fortnite? All right. Do we believe this is the right code? <laughs> Transcription API, well, obviously it's it's not correct now because it's not transcription API detect. Uh, I just noticed I need to clean the email and things like that from the web browser extension templates original repo, probably so.
yeah, probably want to just take a, uh, a look through all of the, all of the things. Hold on one second, I gotta check a Discord message. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. Ag for later. <laughs> sure. Uh, so what are we passing in here? So we're passing in URIs and a track and a stream ID. Uh, and at some point we'll probably want to expose like being able to pick which track, but we don't have to worry about that quite yet. Now, why are we, hey, Martinator. I saw your lurk earlier, but it looks like you're back. How's it going? So let's add a new interface. Uh, Copilot's not gonna write it for us. Okay, answer, oh, there we go. <laughs> Just tell it a little bit, been gaming on the side? Cool, cool. Um, are you, I've not been keeping up with your streams recently. Are you still playing, uh, what is it, God Eater? Are you playing that? Hey, uh, Zero X Gaming 420, you're back. This is not uh, what we were playing uh, last Friday, which is uh, Mind Over Magic, but uh, still playing that. Yeah, cool. Every uh, every Sunday I do a uh, coding stream where I'm working on a, a coding project. Uh, been on the party animal craze. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of that. There's just too many streams, not enough time. And then also back to work, which is not a new thing, but uh, yeah, sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know your coding looks amazing. Uh, well, thank you. It's, um, it's uh, what is it? It's obviously my idea and kind of direction on what we're doing and components and stuff. And then I'm using GitHub Copilot. So a lot of AI written nonsense that I'm going to have to go back and fix. Uh, and then some bits, uh, like the Docker file was a lot of, uh, a lot of that was contributed by uh, brainless a society here in the chat. Can't lie. I'm too lazy to learn it full and definitely perfect for Sundays. Well, Hey, it's, um, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things that coding is something that is just, uh, there's so many layers and so many things, but it can start really easy, right? With something like Python or, I mean, HTML isn't programming, but HTML can get you into a place where, you know, you're making a website and you can start adding a little bit of JavaScript to do things. And it's something where there, there are things that can be really approachable and there's a lot of resources out online for learning how to program, starting from various places and in various directions. Uh, but it is something that you have to bring, you know, it, it's something that you have to bring that mental willpower to invest the time to learn and to build the skills. You'd have to learn Dynamo for work. Uh, which Dynamo are you referring to? <laughs> since the, uh, since I don't want to learn anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, that that is one big thing. If you get into the the programming software engineering field, uh, oh, for a program, Revit. Not something I've heard of. Uh, if you get into the field, then it's it's the learning will never stop. Because a lot of what programming is, is like, okay, sure, you connect things together, you wire stuff together. Uh, I see. And then you have to figure out like, well, how does this thing work to be able to talk to it? Um, if you find yourself in a place where it's like, oh, I'm just doing the same thing again. Well, code, unlike like 
making uh, like electrical work or something else where you were physically doing stuff with code, you can just copy it, right? So you should never be in the situation where you're doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, use a loop. <laughs> it's not that simple, but that's the idea. All right, so we have an interface for the silence detection API. Um, detect input, yeah, okay. So that looks right. And why, why do we have the stream ID here? We're, we're translating it and we fetch, oh, I see. So we're posting the, the transcript task. All right, going back to lurking. Hey, thanks for the lurk. See you around, Martinator. Um, but I think, speaking of repeating ourselves, we're gonna repeat ourselves. <laughs> this should be basically the same, except uh, a couple of words different. All right, so it won't be the transcription task URL, it's the silence detection task URL. Sounds so recursive. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know what I said just now. I'm assuming you're referring to the the comment that I just made uh, about repeating ourselves <laughs> or the loop. Oh yeah. Or are you making a pun? Because instead of making a loop, you could recur. <laughs> Talking about repeating myself, I will repeat myself. <laughs> yes. You just don't want to repeat yourself too much. If you find yourself repeating yourself, maybe there's an opportunity to refactor yourself. No, wait. To <laughs> find the bits that are repetitive and, you know, refer to them. Talking about coding generally. When it comes to talking about things, uh, like here streaming, I'm gonna be repeating my, <laughs> careful with repeating overflow. <laughs> stack overflow, how much stack is there? Yeah. Uh, so we want, what is, what is the URL? What is the URL? And, hmm. So for that, we can actually just look at the Nginx config, I think. That's ultimately where that's coming from. Silence detection instead of transcription. Uh, and I think the rest of this stuff is fine. I just fix the wording here. And this is not the transcription, it's the silence detection. API detect input is the type of the argument. Okay, so if we save that, and then we go back to our component here, then my stomach is growling, is what? Uh, then that should be good, and then we have to restart the front end again. Hey, unlike last Sunday, the stream has not crashed <laughs> yet. All right, so if we refresh, we'll probably still see errors about Veet or our filtering that we've not implemented, but that's fine. All, all of this is fine, just ignore that. Start to text silences, uh, that's all normal. Uh, we got a 500 error when we're trying to put the request with silence detection task URL. So we got that. Um, I don't know that it should be low. That's no, I guess that's normal. That's the external one. Response was 
I, uh, Brainless says, I am looking at the extension code. And four years later, I want to hit my old stuff for writing such elegant code. I mean, that's that's always the case. Um, I feel like there's definitely things that, like, that that's, I guess part of that is hindsight bias, right? And also just like level of like, in four years, you've gained four years of experience. And also you, you, people are typically more critical of themselves than others. So you combine like, yeah, it was in the past, you learned from the experience, not only of working on that before, but then working on things since and hindsight bias for like, oh, well, obviously that is not the right thing to do um, because having seen that work other ways elsewhere, but also it being stuff you know that you wrote. What's fun is when you look at code and you don't re realize you've wrote it. <laughs> you don't recognize it as something you've written. Um, but on the other hand, there was there was definitely a point where every, all code that I looked at, even my past code, other people's code, um, you know, there's e it's easy to see problems. Yeah, that has happened. <laughs> it's easy to see flaws or imperfections in code, but no code is ever going to be perfect. What does perfect even mean? Every like every time we're making something, we're making trade-offs. Those trade-offs might be time invested in figuring out how to structure something. It might be the problem at hand versus other problems that turn up later, you know, and, and solving one thing versus solving all possible problems. You know, there, there's all sorts of trade-offs involved and, you know, nothing is going to be perfect because first you would have to define what perfect is. That's not going to happen. Uh, speaking of some imperfect code, <laughs> the other day you were helping a coworker with a bug and it was like, I don't think this code does tracing. It was like, yes, here it is. And it's like, oh, I wrote that. <laughs> sure. Um, so what's going wrong here? What, what, what's wrong now? So we're getting a 500 error when we are trying to put to record stream. So we're trying to update the stream record and it's not working. So I guess we can look at the logs, the output. We don't have anything fancy like, um, uh, like a logging capturing thing across all of our services. That's something we could have. <laughs> your memory is like twice your actual age. That's fair. I. It's, it's funny, some things, um, I don't know what the pattern is, but there's some things that I will retain uh, <laughs> and other things that I won't. Um, but I generally, you know, if I want to remember something, got to write it down. And code is, yeah, well, a log aggregator. We could have something, I mean, because we have logging and tracing sort of set up in our Rust code, but it's not going anywhere anywhere except for STD out or STD error, whatever the case is. Um, I was playing around with a uh, open telemetry thing at one point, but I couldn't get it to work right. Um, so yeah, any, any of those things <laughs> rather than, you know, going to the individual containers. Uh, what am I looking for? Silence detection? No, no, no. I'm looking for the CRUD API. There it is. So what's going on here with the CRUD API? What did we get a 500 error? Can we tell? It might have been a little bit in the past. Today's the 11th, right? Okay, let's do this. Let's clear the log. And then let's go back to the front end. And 
let's replay the put request. Can we do that? Uh, maybe from the network tab? You're gonna grab some food? <laughs> I want some food. All right, so we try to put. Let's uh, resend that. It's also a 500 error, that's good. Let's go back to the console, back to Docker. There we go, error. Error updating record. There are no changes to save. This query cannot be built. Okay, so there's something missing in the code that um, stores things. By the way, if you want to build the extension, you should be able to use the Docker file for it. Okay. Uh, I think I have it tabbed here. Yes. Oh, look, there's a Docker file. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks like it's just using yarn. Sure. Uh, okay, so we see in the log, we are trying to do an update stream request. Title, description, thumbnail, topics, prefix, speech, video clips, transcription, transcription, silence detection task URL. So we have a thing to update but it says there are no changes to save. This query cannot be built. So something is not wired up correctly. Something. Uh, in CRUD API, I guess. So stream, do we need to do anything? Oh, so we didn't update this yeah okay so that should tell us there's some other stuff missing right so now where we built the, the update stream change set we're missing those other fields now copilot can handily write that for us I don't think we need to add those fields for create or the other things. Maybe forget one. Maybe get one needs to be updated, but I think that those bits are handled inside of the, the structs that we updated before. So what this is probably telling me is that um, maybe some of this stuff needs to be moved into structs. It is kind of specific to the update, I don't know. I, I did search for transcription segments, so I probably just, oh, right, 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 right. So in the, I guess I just didn't update this file. The file called update was not updated. <laughs> All right, so let's rebuild CRUD API. Uh, What's fun is the, the other task stuff, like triggering the silence detection, that must have worked, right? For us to get to the point where we're trying to update the record with the task URL. We just can't see it working because um, uh, this API failed. Okay, so if we switch back now to the front end, uh, we shouldn't even need to refresh. Like all, all the all the stuff should be working. So we click that, and then there we go. So now the UI updates. We can check status. The task is running. Um, and then once the task completes, we'll be able to load the results. This little bit of UI could probably probably be cleaned up and made into like a a little something. I don't know. We use an icon here or something. I don't know. Maybe if the task is running, we don't want to start uh, allow the user to start another task. How long does this take to run? Well, so what it's doing is it's running FFmpeg over each of the video clip files. Each video clip is a 20 minute long uh, MKV file that has a bunch of audio tracks and the video encoded in it. 
And so there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I mean, five an hour, three hours. So there's a, probably about 15 files there. I think it takes more than a second and less than a minute per file. Uh, if I still had Redis up, let me get that back up. We could actually see the data and play. It's task number 26. So if we search for task 26 star. So we've gotten two so far. Interesting. So the second video, there was a silence. Wait, are these? I'm confused. Maybe. I thought the segments were the silences. Are these the silences or are they things that are not silence? In spite of the name of the thing. <laughs> let's let's go check. What are we actually doing in the Silence Detection API? So um, let's collapse all that. So what we're returning in output are segments. And the segments are, okay, start and end are coming from parsing the captures. So we're, we're using a regular expression. So we're looking for, huh, we're looking for silence end and silence duration. A wishy-washy appears in chat. I don't think I have one of those. Okay. Hmm. Duration and end. And start is end minus duration, so we work backwards. But these are looking for the silences, right? Silence detect, noise duration. I don't know why, I guess we'll figure things out once uh, this finishes running. Can we refresh? So now we have, so detected no silences in the fifth video. We're still processing. Interesting. So in the fifth video, I did not stop talking. So that probably means that, I mean, that makes sense. I talk a lot, um, but also, of course, the video segments are only twenty minutes only twenty minutes long. Um, but typically, I go an hour between breaks. Ah, it escaped. Ah, so hungry. Come on, hurry up. Go do. All right, fifth video. There were no silences apparently. Um, one thing that would be interesting to do, right? So if we look at the task data. So this is looking at um, a file. We can actually pull up the file and see what was going on. Yeah, you don't need to see that. Uh, let's see, videos, OBS. Uh, yeah, we can pull this down. All right, so the, the first one that we looked at was 124 uh, 18 15 well, that's confusing that's not the first video from the 24th though why is that not the first one in the list 1815 huh what happened there 
Why is 1755 not the first one on the list? Are they otherwise in order? I think they are. Um, is the video clip? Yeah, how did that? Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. So that, that would be a problem. Are the rest in the right order? 35, 55. Huh. Did I somehow change it? Or is that a bug that I got loaded from? Curious. Well, anyway, so the one we were looking at just now. Uh, there we go. Get all the windows going. Uh, 1815 is this video. data so the first video here okay so this makes sense this is why the silence was detected from the start into like five minutes into the video because this video is actually the first video <laughs> can we rearrange the order of these nope okay guess not But yeah, so it says there was a silence at starting at 935 seconds in to 937 seconds in. So, I mean, I could scroll through the video, but I think it'll be more, uh, <laughs> it'll be more interesting if we take, so the start, 935. So 935 divided by 60, 15 minutes in, 15 minutes into the 20 minute video, I'm not talking for like a good, oh, for for two seconds. <laughs> okay, that's not very interesting actually. Oh yeah, was this, was this where I was trying to, f no. Huh, 15 and a half minutes in, so about here. I see. So the silence was me waiting to capture <laughs> the the land ball, I guess. Interesting. Okay. So we might need to increase kind of the threshold for the length of the silences. But that's fine. And you can see here, where there were a couple of silences detected in the other videos. Uh, is there a longer one here? So that was like, this one's like two seconds as well. This one is not all, also not that long. Not that long. Uh, 140 to 345. So this is probably where the break was. 40, 60, yeah. So at the very beginning of the fourth video, there was uh, a break for probably a couple minutes. And then somewhere in here was a break. Yeah, so I think this is working-ish. Um, and I think, yeah, the task is complete. So if I go over here and click check status, hey look, task completed, load results. does nothing. <laughs> uh, if we look at the network tab over here, maybe. There we go. So here's the data. So we had a start and end. We had a bunch of these. Why, why are there no results? Well, there's probably something wrong in our UI code. What could it be? Um, 
Well, it's interesting. So we have this thing called get transcription task. I think we probably just want to rename this to get task. Because I think we're using it from both. And it, it just calls the task URL, right? And returns the JSON. So that's probably what we're calling in um, async result loader. And then we have task data. And then we set task to task data. And then when we load data, we're getting data from there and we set value for source. Set value, okay. So that seems fine. Uh, the key thing is that in stream silence detection input, where, wherever we're using async result loader, source is this, which is coming from where we're using this which is coming from where we're using this. Uh, is it called silent segments? I guess it is. I think we're using that everywhere, right? That name. Also, that was the wrong hotkey. Control Shift F. Hmm. Silent segments. Maybe we do need to refresh. Let's refresh. Check status, load results. Okay, we don't have anything here though, why not? Inspect, uh, let's go over to the React component tree and inspect this whole thing. So somewhere in here <laughs> is the React admin components that has the information. So there's the form, record context provider, record context provider. So does this have the record context? Yeah, silent segments is null. Interesting. Do we have something in the console telling us there was a problem? Okay, I really should do something about Veet and its complaints. Okay, let's clear that and load results. Okay, the topics thing is, is fine. Okay, we're not getting any other... This is like Veet trying to talk to itself. I don't care about that. Huh. So there's a couple of possibilities. One would be that we are not actually calling. So in other words, in async result loader, we don't actually have the values. Or the other possibility is something's going wrong with this. Let's see if I can set a debug uh, line here. Bugger. Streams. I'm clicking, but it's not doing anything. Oh, <laughs> rip Firefox. Didn't like that. Okay, the stream's still going. Just Firefox has decided that it doesn't want to do this. Why is that? I don't know. Who could say? Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, mapped. Let's hide that sidebar. Now, if I go over to here where we're loading the data, put a breakpoint there, and then I click the load results. Show original variables checkbox in the scopes panel to turn them on. Where? Scopes show original variables. There we go. So task data, hey look, there's a bunch of data. Starts and ends, go figure. Source, silence, segments. Another possibility is that um, there's a typo or some inconsistency. We step over this. Yeah, so values has the values. 
See? Values. Seems fine. Yep. So if we continue... But we don't have anything here. Why is that? Uh, let's see. If we go back to components... Do we see... Okay, there's the toolbar. So... In here... Do we see our component... Let's go back to the source. We... All right. So, um, in... Let's, let's start from the top, right? So we have the edit view, the edit component, and we have a stream silence detection input. We have silent segments. It's the same spelling as what we're using elsewhere. Great. Inside of here, we have segment input oh, oh oh I know what we're doing wrong so no record subsource uh, capitalization here is weird let's change that uh, but that should be fine otherwise Right? We're iterating over the segments and we're producing a stream silence detection segment input for each segment. That's probably fine. You know what we can do is we can put a breakpoint here uh, in the browser and make sure that we are getting a value here eventually. Oops. Sounds detection input. I don't know what's the difference between the, this one and the one that says mapped, but at least setting the breakpoint in the mapped one seemed to work. So let's let's continue doing that. Um, this code hasn't been updated, uh, but it was just a capitalization change, so it should be fine. If we click, click load results, we do hit this, and we do see record, and there are no silent segments here. But potentially there could be multiple runs of this. But there aren't. Okay. So whatever's going on, we are failing to update the form? Huh. What if we go to a different stream really quick? Like one where we've not loaded the transcripts either. Right, so now the record here. It doesn't have the transcripts or that. Yeah, it's gonna load a lot. <laughs> All right, so now if we look at the record, there we go. Transcription segments null. So it's the same. It's the same deal. Like we've not loaded it yet. Um, so it's not unusual that we are not seeing the uh, that we're seeing a null there. For silent segments. So the question is, why are we not able to update um, that field when we click uh, load results? It's not showing anything. I mean, it it makes sense why it's not showing anything because this this doesn't exist. And so it's defaulting to an empty array, but why doesn't it exist when we are calling uh, form context that set value? With source and values. A mystery. Okay, 
Well, I am so hungry. And we only have a little bit of time left uh, scheduled for the stream anyway. So I think we're going to stop here uh, with a little bit of a mystery. That'll give us a good place to pick up next time.